Nothing top your cut. No, no, nothing top your cut. Nothing top your cut. Into the black dragon and listen to his knowledge This is Michael 101 and he's professor to the college Posting up videos on YouTube Coming directly to you Showing you the ins and outs of what not to do So here we are at Mountain Motorsports With my good friend Chris January And uh, we're going to do something really kind of cool today We're going to change oil on a motorcycle We're going to change it on our own In a garage um, Now typically you might come to a place like Mountain Motorsports um, to get your oil change, but what we're going to do is Chris is going to go over the fine points of What you should do if you're changing your oil yourself. Yeah, definitely John. So mm -hmm. Talk to us. All right. Well number one first thing you've already gone over the tools that we need For this job you will need a drain pan Shop towels the appropriate socket on a 3 8 drive socket wrench a torque wrench a new oil filter an oil filter wrench a new crush washer, contact cleaner or brake parts cleaner, new oil, rubber gloves, and a funnel. To keep your paws clean. You know, oil is really kind of a hard thing to get off your hands when you get it on there. So I always like to wear gloves, so it makes it a little bit easier. So first thing you want to do with any motorcycle before you change your oil is you actually want to run the bike for a short period of time. You want to get a little bit of heat in the oil. Okay, oil is thicker when it's cold. So you want to do is get a little bit of heat in the oil that helps it drain a little bit more out. Okay. So how long should you leave it running? Uh, well, you definitely don't want to let it, I mean, some people will get it to operating temperature, but if you're about to change your oil, it's going to burn you. You okay. really don't want to do that. Okay, so on this bike, John, what I did was I already warmed it up for a couple minutes. Just okay. a couple minutes should be good. You really don't want to get it too hot because again, oil does get hot, obviously. Right. And you don't want to burn your hands. So just a couple minutes, we already warmed it up, so the oil is ready to drain out of this motorcycle. All righty, Chris. All right, John. So you, you got to get, like down on your knees, huh? Get down on your knees. Yeah, you know, oh, working oh. in the shop, I guess uh, I'm a little lucky because I can use things like motorcycle lifts. But if you're doing this in your garage, um, you're gonna get down on your knees, get on the ground, get dirty. That's what we're doing. So right. uh, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get that oil drain bolt broken loose and out of the way. Oil oh, drain bolt broken yep. loose. On this motorcycle way. right here, we picked this motorcycle because everything is relatively exposed. Okay, so it makes it a little bit easier for everyone to see. Drain plugs, oil filter location, things like that, even the type of oil filter can be different for your motorcycle or different motorcycles. Because on my motorcycle, the old drain plug is down here on the bottom. Exactly. Yeah, okay. some are going to be horizontal, some are going to be vertical, some are going to be on the side of the engine case, some are, they're going to be in different locations. Some motorcycles have multiple drain plugs. So it's always good to have a shop manual while doing this. Shop manual. Shop manual while doing this. Shop manual while doing this. Yeah. Okay, so... First thing you're going to do is you're going to put your wrench on there. Put it on there nice and tight. Make sure it's going in the right direction. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. You got it. Go and pull on that thing and break it loose. I'm gonna hold this. Oh my goodness. Uh, there, there you go. go. All right, now you don't have gloves on, so let me take it off. Oh yeah, you take yeah, it off. Yeah, I'm gonna take it off. So okay. What you're gonna do is just make sure the oil filter pans in a good spot. You know, you know, don't do it like this because obviously oil starts from up here and it's gonna wanna flow out pretty quick. So make sure you kind of get it out a little ways. <clears throat> Unscrew the, the oil drain plug. If you drop it in the pan and you're wearing gloves, no big deal. I do it all the time. You'll just retrieve it. If you you're wearing, oh, look how quickly you did that. Yeah. You, you didn't even get out. any oil on the floor. Uh, not this time. <laughs> <laughs> not this time. We got lucky. So what you're going to do is just let all the oil drain out. At this point, what you want to do is take a look at your oil drain plug. Make sure the threads are in good shape. Okay. okay. You want to make sure that these are all in good shape. Uh, some oil drain plugs can be magnetic. Uh, this one is not, but Bring what you want to do closer. is... Yeah, there you go. Do it um, again. Start all over. Okay. So this is a good time since the oil's draining. What you want to do is take a good look at your drain plug. You're going to want to take a look at the threads on the drain plug. Make sure that they're not getting damaged. Uh, there was no cross-threading before. Maybe if you bought a used bike, maybe somebody cross-threaded the, dra thread the drain plug into the motorcycle. Uh, if, it, that, if it looks like any of these threads are damaged at all, you want to go ahead and replace this. So we'll just take a look at that. Um, some drain, pan, uh, drain plugs are going to have magnets on them. So they'll trap small part uh, particles of metal or anything like that that is magnetic that's floating around in your oil. This one is not. Uh, but if it was, then you take a look at that to see if you have anything trapped on it. Um, another thing to pay attention to and remove and replace every time you drain your oil your is washer. your crush washer. Your crush washer. Yes. This is something they're very inexpensive. You get them at Motorcycle dealerships, automotive, play, um, automotive shops, and things like that. And it's just a small piece of metal. But it is soft metal, and it is designed to seal. This is also called a sealing washer. 
Okay. So you, being a ceiling washer, it's a one-time use thing. Once you break it loose, you want to replace it. So a crush washer is a ceiling washer. It is a ceiling washer. And it needs to be replaced and it every needs time. To be replaced every time you drain, uh, every time you change your oil. Every so. time you change your oil. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm going to do is before we go, you know, put this back on, I'm going to go get a new one of these. And I was wrong. This is actually a magnetic. It is magnetic. Plug. I did yeah. not know that. So. Wow. There you go. This is not the stock drain plug for this bike. I don't believe. So it is not. But anyway, so we will replace this before we go to put the drain plug back in. Okay. So <clears throat> most of our oil has drained out of the motorcycle at this point. So what we can do now is we can remove the filter. So we're gonna go over, John's getting it for me. This is an oil filter wrench. Now these are designed to remove the filter, not to put the filter back on. Because you only put the filter on hand tight. Exactly, hand All tight right. a little bit more. Okay. Now you will see me, if you come into the shop while I'm working on motorcycles, I will put them on with this. I've done this for many years. I'm trying to save my hands. Okay. But well, we I shouldn't do, this, do that. Yeah. Yeah, but you shouldn't do that. If you're not doing this every day like I do it, you know, just do it hand tight. That's really what they should. They have a O-ring on them that's a ceiling ring. I'll show you that when I get the oil filter off. Okay. It really just needs to be hand tight, and that's about it. All right. Okay. Okay. So we'll go ahead, and I'm going to move around to the other side. It makes it a little bit easier. All and right. And get that oil filter off. Okay. So we're taking the oil filter off. So over here, same thing, you're just going to want to unscrew it. Here we go, we're just going to break loose the oil filter. Well, it looks like it's on more than hand tight. Yeah, it looks like it is. Exactly right, John. So we'll get it to the point where it wants to just free spin like that, and we'll just a little, little bit drain out of her. <clears throat> Take it all the way off. And then drain as much as you can back into the oil pan. Oh, so, so you turn it over and, and drain it out. Exactly. Just drain it out as much as you can. All right, so that's that. So this is going to be your oil filter. It still has the uh, wrench on it. We'll have to knock that off. Um, this is your sealing ring on your, on your oil filter. When I go get the new oil filter, when I put it on, what I'm going to do is put a very small coating of oil around this O-ring. That helps seal it. And again, we're only going to put it on hand tight, like John said. So that's your oil filter. This is a Yamaha oil filter, which is a good thing. You always want to use really good, high quality stuff on your vehicles. Um, there's a couple different reasons inside of these. There's things called bypass valves. Um, if so Have you ever had a clutch go out on your bike? Never. Never had a clutch go out on your bike. No. I've seen you ride. You know, I'm I... surprised. I think my clutch is, uh, is slipping. I, I speed shift most of the time. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then you might have particles of metal inside of your oil filter. Not I clutch. might. What happens Holy if things moly. start to wear? Okay. Um, you know, the way a filter works is it is a filtering element inside here. Okay. So you have oil that flows through it. And the, the elements that are inside these, some oil filter companies use different elements. But it just traps the metal, clutch fibers, whatever's floating around in there. So it doesn't go through your in engine. If this becomes fully plugged and it does not have a bypass valve, it will starve the top end of the engine of oil. Oh, wow. You cannot circulate it back around at the top end. Right. Some of the cheaper oil filters do not have bypass valves. So you want to make sure you got a good quality filter on your vehicle. Always go, of course, you know, I'm going to recommend OEM stuff because that's what's designed for your vehicle. However, there are some good aftermarket companies out there. What does OEM mean? Original Equipment Manufacturer. Okay. So it's people that actually produce parts for the vehicles, for the manufacturers. Okay. Yeah. So this is a Yamaha filter, so it's a good quality filter. We know that. All right. So. All right, I think at this point we pretty much got all the oil out of her. So we can start putting everything back together. Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> so if your wrench gets stuck on your oil filter, what you can always do is just take your other wrench, your socket wrench, and just tap on it. Knock it right off. So. Now, what I got here, John, is I got a new crush washer and the old crush washer. So you can kind of see that this one has not been used yet, so it has not been crushed. It's not so, crushed, so, right? Yeah, yeah. So that one's thin. Um, if I go to put this one back on, it's not always going to leak. But there is a very good possibility, since it hasn't been seated and torqued to spec the way it should be with the bolt that it could potentially leak. You get that little mystery spot of oil on the ground or something like that. So there you go. Take a look at those two. 
nice that this is a magnetic ring for it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and I'm going to throw that away. I'm going to put this new one on. And we're going to get ready to put this back on. So, that is ready to go back in. We got our new oil filter here. Um, I'm going to put a Yamaha filter back on it. All right. So, that's what we're going to use. So, all righty. We are ready to put this back on. You want to get dirty, John? Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> but you, you got the gloves on. Yeah, I know, right? Okay. So here we go. Let me get this out of the way. So we're okay. Like okay. It. Okay. Yeah, okay. Wanna... All right. So we're gonna first put the oil filter back on, John. Got our new one. Yep. We're gonna take some oil from down here. It's okay if you use a little bit of old oil. It's no big deal. We're gonna wipe it around the O-ring. Why do you do that? Well, that just helps it seal. That's just gonna help it seal. Okay. That's, what, that's the reason why you do that. You just take a little bit of oil, you go ahead and put it on the actual the oil seal itself or the uh, O-ring, uh -huh. and it just it's gonna it's gonna help the oil filter seal to the engine case. All right. So you don't get any leaks. Okay. So, I'm gonna go ahead and screw this on. And again, you're just gonna do it hand tight, and you want it to be tight and snug, you know, but not too terribly tight. So okay. that should be good. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the uh, oil drain plug. Um, should I use this? No, you should use a torque wrench. You are smart. My <laughs> You're higher, John. You don't want to over torque you, it. You're exactly right. Um, that and and you know torque wrenches don't necessarily need to be the most expensive thing in the world. Um, obviously, I I might have one that's a little bit more expensive than your normal shop mechanic or a home mechanic, excuse me, is going to use. Um, but you can actually go to places. Uh, you know, Sears, Harbor I'm being Place. called a home mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. You're getting dirty just like the rest of us. Um, yeah, you can go to Home Depot. You can go to a lot of different places have to work wrenches. Okay. So you don't necessarily have to spend a ton of money. Uh, but you just definitely need to make sure when you're putting on, well, we use them for a lot of different things, but um, especially when you're doing this, this gets removed and, re and uh, reinstalled quite a bit. So you know, want to make sure you use a torque wrench you know, properly set to the correct torque. Okay. To install this. So, just run it in finger tight first. So in over, so in order not to over tighten your, your um, uh, bolt here and perhaps screw up your um, threads or, or. Uh, well, you know, on this bike in particular, it has a separate oil pan. Mm -hmm. um, worst case scenario, if something like that does happen, uh, you could replace just the oil pan. However, some motorcycles, the drain plug is a part of the case assembly. Oh, yeah. So, worst case scenario, yeah, you could be replacing an engine case. That's worst case scenario. We can, we can heal a coil, we can time cert, things like that. We can repair things to a certain extent. But well, if you're using so the you right tools, to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're not going to have to worry about that if you're using the right tools. Okay. So, what we're going to do, this bike, um, this Yamaha FZ07, which is what we're working on right now. Okay. Um, its drain plug is 31 foot pounds. Okay. Um, it seems like a lot. It really does, because a lot of you know drain plugs can go anything from 16 foot pounds, and 31 is kind of kind of quite a bit. But that's what Yamaha requires uh, for the torque on this one. So we're gonna set, we're gonna go ahead and torque this to 31 foot pounds. 31 foot pounds. Mm -hmm. Slide this out of the way. Give me a little bit more room. And when you're torquing, what you're listening for, and it depends on the torque wrench, but this one in particular particular is a click style torque wrench. So it's gonna make a clicking noise when it gets to torque. That's your click. Yes. Right there. So we know we're at torque. Okay, right. so that little that little click lets you know you don't need to do it anymore. No more. All right. And I might do it a couple times just to make sure. But yeah, you just click it a few times and you're good. You don't want to bounce it or anything like that. You just want to make sure you get that click. Okay. And that's it. Um, so now what we can do is we can clean up a little bit around there. We got some oil that drained out, you know, drained along the where the oil filter came out and the drain plug. So I'm just going to take a rag of that real quick, clean that up a little bit. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fill it with oil. Fill it with oil. All right. Sounds good. All I'm going to need to do now is just take some contact cleaner or brake parts cleaner. I'm just going to clean up the area where the oil drained down. Just spray it, wipe it off with a rag, no big deal. Um, depending on where the drain plug is, uh, some bikes do drain uh, Suzuki GSXRs, things like that. Other motorcycles will sometimes drain from the oil filter onto the head pipe, your exhaust pipe. You want to clean up as much of that as you can. You're not going to get it at all. So when you start the bike up and it starts to smoke, don't be too concerned. Not really that big of a deal. 
But that's why you want to try to clean up the mess as best as possible. So all I'm going to do, be doing is just spraying it off on the engine case. Just try to clean it up so there's no oil dripping on the ground. All right, so I'm doing that right now. I put the drain pan under there, so it's going to catch some of the, the old oil and stuff like that that I'm spraying off. Kind of try to get everywhere where the oil could have gone. Drain a little bit. Just wipe it. Should be good. But now we're gonna start filling the motorcycle with oil. Okay. Right, so we're you know, Yamaha. We are a dealership, Yamaha dealership. So we're gonna be using correct stuff. Yamaha in Lube. Okay. Yamaha Lube. Yamaha Lube. You got it. Yamaha Lube. 1040. So that's what we're gonna be putting back in the bike. So what we're gonna do is break this loose because this is gonna be the oil fill on this motorcycle. All right, John, so we put some oil in the motorcycle, okay, but we're not done with putting oil in the motorcycle because we're still gonna have to run the motorcycle. We gotta fill the oil filter with oil, so it's gonna take some of that oil that's in the, in the crankcase at this point. So first thing we wanna do is we just wanna make sure we've got sufficient amount of oil in the engine before we start it. So the way we're gonna do that, a lot of times this is good to do with another person. This particular motorcycle and any motorcycle needs to be, the oil level needs to be checked but in the upright position. Okay. okay, so over on the side stand, if you'll see right now, this bike has a sight window for the oil level, completely full. But John, if you'll do me a favor and lean the bike, you'll see that oil level come down. So right now it's actually where it needs to be, but we haven't ran the motorcycle yet. So we will have to put more oil in. But right now I know, okay, I can go ahead and start my bike. I can fill the oil filter with the amount of oil that it needs, and then I can top off. Okay. So you put it back on the side stand. So John, not all motorcycles have sight glasses. Okay, right. you see this sometimes, well you see it with any kind of motorcycle, ATV, side by side, they can all have a sight gloss. Um, some motorcycles have dipsticks. Your bike has a dipstick. Right. Okay, so if you don't have a sight glass with dipsticks, there can be two different ways of checking the oil level. Whether or not you screw it all the way in, or if you just stick it in and pull it back out. What you'll want to do is refer to your owner's manual or a shop manual, or give us a call, we can, we can help you out with that. So. We, and then some of the dipsticks will actually move, like the Harley one. They will move. Yep. Move. So uh -huh. so you can check it when it's on on, on the side stand. On the like, side stand. That's a very good point. Yeah, there are some there are some other style dipsticks out there. Okay. So yeah, there's definitely different ways. So uh, that'll be in your owner's manual. Check your owner's manual. It's the best way because you know a little bit too full, not enough oil. It can be a big deal. So you just want to make sure that you do it right. All right. All right, so what we're gonna do now, John, is we're just gonna run the motorcycle for a short period of time. Um, we're just gonna run this one for a short period of time. Again, with the vehicles, there's different ways to run the motorcycle after doing an oil change. Again, you wanna to refer to an owner's manual or a service manual because every bike is different. All right. Okay, so for this bike, all we're gonna do is just run it for a short period of time, and then we're gonna recheck the oil. All right. Alright John, so we ran the bike for a sufficient amount of time so we can double check our oil level. We will have to top off. Uh, so what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you lean the bike up okay, into a neutral and then you're position. Gonna check the oil level. I'm going to check the oil level okay. yep, in the sight glass. So let's check it up. Stand it up if you want to take a look. As you can see, now you don't see anything inside the window. The reason being is, well number one, we just ran the motorcycle. So there still is oil that's still circulating, not circulating, but it's still trapped. 
uh, maybe on the top end that's going to eventually flow back down. But a good portion of that oil that we're not seeing is in the oil filter now, and that's where it's going to stay. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to top off the oil. So we're going to put more oil back in it. We're going to put more oil back, back in it, bring it back up to that level where we were at, and we should be good at that point. Uh, the, what I like to recommend doing is at this point, since you're already down on the ground, you're, you're with the motorcycle, you know, hands deep in the bike, go ahead and start visually inspecting a lot of different things, kind of like stuff that we talked about in the previous video. So, so this is where the difference in doing it yourself and taking it to a shop. Well, yeah, um, you can definitely do what we do uh, in Mount Motorsports. You know, we got a bike up in the air or, or uh, we, we do oil changes on the ground if we have to. Um, we still will visually inspect the motorcycle. We want to make sure that we're going to go ride the motorcycle ourselves. We're going to give it back to the customer. It's going to be in really, really good shape. And if there's anything that needs to be addressed or taken care of, we're going to do it while it's in the shop if we can. So you can you can check your brakes. You can check your radiator fluid level, uh, coolant level. You can check your brake fluids. You can check your drive, drive chain at this point. Um, a lot of different things. You know, pretty pretty much all the stuff we were we were. Uh, talking about in the previous video, if you want to be looking at that fork seals, make sure that they're not leaking, things like that. Great, you know? Great. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's really it when it comes to changing the oil on a motorcycle. Nothing tops your cut. No, no, nothing tops your cut. Nothing tops your cut. Uh, nothing. Into the black dragon and listen to his knowledge. This is Biker 101 and he's professor to the college. Posting up videos on YouTube coming direct from you. Showing you the ins and outs of what not to do. He's truly a breed of buck. Subscribe to his channel. Some try their best, but they don't match his can. Don't believe me, it's cool. Tune in and hear him on truth. He's straight schooling you. His kids are the proof. He's filled with desire. He's filled with respect. He's filled with the fire. He always comes correct. Was five years to prospect. He didn't care about his label. But now he runs the Black Sabbath set in stone is his fable. Black Sabbath forever, forever, Black Sabbath. Thanks for tuning in and get skinny.